All right, we're looking at another problem here. We've got, uh, let's see, the data in the accompanying table represents the population of a certain country, which shall remain nameless, every 10 years for the years 1900 to 2000. An ecologist is interested in finding an equation that describes the population of the country over time. Well, we've got data. We want to find a least squares regression equation treating year as explanatory. So let's open the data. Okay, let's now bring it into StatCrunch and perform a linear regression. Stat, we're going to uh, go down to do, 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 regression. Because we have one x variable and one y variable, that's simple linear regression. The x variable is labeled as x already here. The y variable is y. And that's all I'm going to set. Everything else I'm going to leave it as standard options and just click compute. And we're going to get our regression equation. Uh, it's going to be given to us here. Um, I'm going to just move this a little bit over to the side so I can uh, well actually I can I can I can see my options right here next to it we've got um, negative th uh, let's see the the X variable has the coefficient 2005.355 two, so it rounds to 2005 and then the intercept is negative three seven four four six seven five so you can see that corresponds with option D. That's the one. We have a, a coefficient of 2005 for x, and the intercept, which has no variable next to it, is the negative 3744675. So there's my, let's close that. That's that. Oops, I think that I'm opening that. Okay, click that. Good job. continue okay a normal probability plot of the residuals indicates the residuals are approximately normally distributed test whether a linear relation exists between year and population at the alpha equals 0 0.01 level of significance okay when we are doing this test the null hypothesis is that the slope is zero which is to say that the explanatory variable x has no significant uh, you know impact on the population uh, the alternative is that it's not equal to zero, that the slope is like a, a non-zero slope matters for like significantly. Like there's evidence that this, that you want to multiply some number of times the year to give you uh, a prediction that's like defendable statistically. So the, the, it's always going to be the null that's, so beta zero is the, is the intercept, beta one is the slope. So we're going to use that H naught beta 1 equals 0 uh, and then beta 1 not equal to 0 is the alternative. Now determine the p-value for the hypothesis test. That is done in StatCrunch. Um, if we pop back into StatCrunch we can see that's actually been done for us. When we when we do the linear regression we're down below we're given a slope estimate right that slope estimate of 2005 the alternative was that the slope was not equal to zero. And if you scroll across, the p-value was 0 0.0001. So that it's virtually nothing, like virtually zero. It's less than that. Um, so the p-value is essentially zero. Um, remember, we're not, we don't care about the intercept, uh, although that also was significant. Um, the, now you'll also see the analysis of variance table for regression model. That's going to have the same p-value as the slope does. That's the, going to be the case always when you have a simple linear regression. Um, this is just asking the question, is a linear model appropriate? And for a simple linear regression, that question is the same as asking, is the slope non-zero? Um, so anyway, the, the, the p-value is zero. I'm going to just put in the, the zero. Excellent. And I, and oops, uh, okay. State the appropriate conclusion. Okay, well, if the p-value is zero, you always reject the null hypothesis. And you say there is sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear relation exists between the two variables. Okay, it's significant. Let's continue. Okay, now we're asked to draw a scatter diagram creating year as explanatory. Uh, let's go to our to StatCrunch and let's create this, this scatter plot. 
okay um, in fact actually if we let, let's just see the simple integration I think it creates it for you by default it does there's actually you can see there's one of two pages uh, if we go to the second page here's our scatter plot it draws the scatter plot points and it draws the line of best fit um, if I I'm going to make it like square so it kind of matches the data but it clearly this is the same as option a right um, it's not any of the others there's things you can do to match up the axes and stuff but I don't even need to because like there's only three options and this one's increasing that's the only one that it could possibly be um, plot the residuals against the explanatory variable well let's do that um, I'm going to, to, to get the residuals, I need to go back to my options and I'm going to go down here and see graph. I want to graph the residual, um, residuals versus X values. That's a, a, a graph I want to create. Now, when I click compute, it'll create that as my graph in the second page. Let's try to like make this a little bit bigger. Um, second page. These are my residuals versus the year. Now that is very suspicious. If you ever see residual plot that has a definite pattern to it, then that casts a lot of doubt on whether or not the residuals are, whether the data, um, the residuals are um, a, uh, independent. So the idea would be that your residual, positive or negative, should have nothing to do with the year. It should be a random, variable in fact it should be a nor normally distributed random variable so you should just see a scattered cloud here with no pattern but here is this u shape which tells you that probably a linear model is not the appropriate model to use uh, and any if you know anything about population growth you would have already thought that from the beginning for population growth we model that using an exponential um, an exponential curve not a linear not a linear you know e equation okay a lot of blah 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 i'm just saying if you see a residual plot and, and you have a shape to it and it doesn't look like a random cloud then that's uh that's a problem so this is my plot i'm going to find the one that looks like it looks like a v this is the one okay and then we're going to have a question does a linear model seem appropriate based on the scatter diagram and residual plot I would say no. You even see a little bit of a curve in the in the scatter plot. It seems to curve upwards. It, it's you know when you have a, a a curve increasing curve, when you look at just a small section of it, it could look like a straight line. But once you look at those residuals, you see oh there's a really big uh, that 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 curve is um, really it pops out when you show the residuals like that. Um, it means the the line of best fit like the points are all above it at the at the onset and at the end and then they're below it over here um, and you saw that when you had that line of best fit going through the through the data points so um and let's see what is the moral the moral is that let's see explanatory variables may indicate that linear relationship between two variables does not exist even when diagnostic tools such as visual plots indicates it is appropriate eh. no that's not what we found the moral is that inferential procedures may indicate that nonlinear relation between two variables exists, even though the diagnostic tools such as residual plots indicate the linear model is appropriate. Eh. No, the linear the the diagnostic tool found that it didn't exist. Okay, let's find C. The moral is that inferential procedures may indicate that a linear relation between two variables exists, though diagnostic tools such as residual plots indicate that the linear model is inappropriate. Yes, you may find that. So we found that the p-value was zero, which means, so that's the inferential procedure, the hypothesis test. It told us that, the, uh, that there is definitely a significant uh, relationship and that a linear model was, was, what it really is testing is, is a linear model better than nothing? And the answer is yes. However, if we were to apply, uh, if we do like a log transformation on the data, which um, is, I'll save that for another video, you will find that a linear model might be actually really appropriate then. Eh, let's just do it here. Let's, let, I'll, let me show you what that is. This is just a little bonus. This is, let's do our final check of our answer, get, get our, our full credit, and, but let's go back to StatCrunch. Okay, 
I'm gonna make things a little bit bigger to show you what I mean by log transformation. Um, let's see if that's in the options. Okay, uh, I'm going to, let's see if there's transformation, look at that. Let's do a transformation on the Y values, a, a natural logarithm of my Y values. Okay, now I'm going to do natural that and I'm going to create both of my plots, a fitted line plot and the um, residuals versus X values. Let's compute. Okay, and let's look at our output. Now, um, we've got, uh, we still have, we have a different equation um, because this is how does the natural log of population change as a function of time. Uh, if you want to find out what the population is, then you just take e to the power of this whole right-hand side, and then that would be your population estimate. But don't worry about that. We wanted to see how the picture changes, the scatter plot. If a linear, if a log transformation makes the scatter plots much better, fitted line. This looks like a good fitted line. You know, the other one looked okay too. But let's look at the residual plot. The residual plot is much more of a scatter. You have some above, some below, some above, some below. That I would say is is the kind of scatter plot, especially with what do we have? 10, uh, 11 points of data. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna, like this looks like a fine scatter plot. I mean, it's even, it's got, yeah, there's like dip down here and it goes up. That's, that's, that's much better. I mean, I would say for sure that the, um, the, linear model that the log transformation is a better fit. One way you can also compare them is look at the R squared. My R squared 0.9967, um, whereas before, let's just create the other one side by side. Let's, let's just redo simple linear for X and Y, and I'm gonna just do standard kind of, if I didn't do any transformation, my R squared was 0.979. Okay, that's still really high but it's better when I do a log transformation. So this is a way of saying like, okay, a linear model is good, but, uh, but it's actually better to use the log transformation one. Um, okay, that's all I'm gonna talk about here. This covers everything. Um, okay, bye.